this is the initial story of the electron, a very important unit. Now, notice I said story, so let's get ready. And we usually start with once upon a time, a long time ago. I hope you have your blankie and a little uh, cookie and milk and we'll be beginning. The story starts like this. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there were no electrons. No electrons. Until a young Quaker came along by the name of John Dalton in the year 1800. And he proposed a theory of the atom. An atom theory. And this atom theory basically said that indeed there were atoms, that you couldn't just subdivide matter forever. Matter was not continuous. And, uh, and some, a number of things in his theory were wrong. He saw that all atoms are the same for each element. Of course, he didn't understand what was called isotopes. And he also said atoms were indestructible. That wasn't bad, but he didn't understand nuclear particle accelerators. So, uh, but the main thing he did is he showed how compounds combine. Dalton. Well, I haven't said anything about electron. So let's fast forward a mere little hundred years to about 1897. And uh, a guy, a professor at Cambridge by the name of J.J. Thompson. I always forget whether his name is John Joseph or Joseph John. So I'll just call him J.J. Thompson. And J.J. Thompson did a very intriguing experiment. And what he did, he worked with a, an instrument, and I'm going to sketch this up very crudely initially, that he had this sealed glass chamber with a, a plate here called an electrode, and it ran to a battery. It's a negative side. And there's another electrode here, the positive side. These, this was called the cathode. This is called the anode. And he will draw a little tube coming down here out of it. And he drew all the air out thanks to the invention of a vacuum pump. And when he did that and heated up this these electrodes with a battery, uh, he got something interesting. He got a glow here. A glow between these two electrodes. And uh, initially people were knowing about this and they were going around the countryside and it was basically a show. But what J.J. Thompson showed was that this ray, called the cathode ray, was indeed particles. And these particles were coming off this, no matter what this metal was selected here for the uh, cathode, no matter what he selected, he got this same ray coming off. And when he used a, held a magnet to it, he deflected this thing. He could deflect it up towards a magnet. So it was not just a ray of light, it was actually particles because they were the magnet pulled the charged particles. He called these particles corpuscles. Spell right, corpuscles. And uh, the corpuscle eventually became named the electron. He discovered the electron, and he did something more than that. With the electron, he, he discovered and measured, he was a physicist, he measured the charge to mass ratio, and he came out with a value of 1.76 times 10 to the 8 coulombs per gram of electron. Now, you don't, you don't know, coulomb is a quantity of charge. Hear that? C, capital C. 
This is a very large number, 1.76. Well, this value was known by an American scientist by the name of Millikan. He had the charge to mass ratio, but he didn't know the mass. He didn't know the charge. He knew the ratio. So Millikan solved the problem. He was from the University of Chicago, an American, one of the few Americans you'll see in this era. And uh, Millikan determined the charge of the electron to be minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And when you put these two numbers together, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs over 1.76 times 10 to the 8 coulombs per gram, coulombs cancel out, and you have uh, grams here. We'll multiply the numerator and denominator by grams to simplify. Otherwise, it's 1 over 1 over grams. You came out with a value of, are you ready for this? A mass of an electron. A mass of an electron that was 9.1 times 10 to the minus 28 grams. We can measure to 10 to the minus 3 grams. So, <clears throat> what do we have now in the year 1900? In the year 1900, we have that our atoms are not just atoms. There are what you call subatoms. Subatomic particles, 100 years from Dalton. And he proposed that uh, these electrons were sort of in a he called the plum pudding model that the, the atom was basically positive and you had these little specks of electrons and they were moving around but it was there was called the plum pudding model because he didn't understand one major thing about the atom a short time after his work and I'm a little rough on my dates uh, Ernest Rutherford from New Zealand who worked with him. Rutherford's pictures on the $100 bill in New Zealand. Rutherford came along and proved that the atom really had a nucleus. It's about one ten thousandth the size of the overall atom. And the nucleus was positive and had some mass that had to be neutral. He didn't discover the neutron. And the electrons were flying around. Well, at about 1912 in that range, Bohr from Copenhagen came to, they were all, these people were all right there here, were all working at Cambridge University. Cambridge University, 88 Nobel Prize winners, more than any university in the world, uh, were affiliated with Cambridge University. And... Uh, Thompson won the first Nobel Prize. Everyone else here. Millikan, of course, was the University of Chicago. But these electrons were flying around. And Bohr proposed a major thing. He said these electrons flew around at discrete levels. Electrons were at levels. Okay. And what we're going to do in the next tape is now start talking about the electron with a little more sophistication. We're going to talk about these electrons and their levels. So we're going to stop right now and, uh, and see if we can get this electron developed.